Hello and welcome to another video on this channel in which we're going to start a new series and this series will be all about TypeScript. So in the past month I did quite a bit of coding where I rewrote all the JavaScript code that drives my homepage. So the gallery, lazy loading and some other tiny scripts which I use and yeah, did everything with TypeScript. And in this process I learned quite a bit and I thought now I want to share this knowledge with you. So we're going to do a series where we're going to recreate one of the libraries I wrote, which is about lazy loading of content, which is quite important if you want a fast homepage, which doesn't get stuck in the beginning, If it, especially for my homepage, where I have many, many images, YouTube videos included, all that stuff. This shouldn't stop the other content from being loaded. So you use lazy loading for that. And we're gonna write a library which is versatile, which is written in TypeScript. And yeah, I'm gonna take you along, basically recreate that library now. But yeah, to get started, we first have to look at how we set up such a project and also talk a bit about techniques which you can use to create proper code. So techniques like tree shaking. This will be the topic of this video. So I'm going to introduce you to my TypeScript boilerplate, which you can also use for your TypeScript projects. And then we we'll also talk about tree shaking. Yeah, so let's get started. So to get started with TypeScript, the first step is to get a solid project set up. And for this, I've created here in my GitHub space a so-called TypeScript boilerplate, which I also used for all the other projects I have here. So the lazy loader, which will be the topic of this tutorial afterwards. Then the DOM tools and the gallery TS, this is all TypeScript projects based on this boilerplate. So the first step is to set it up and for ease of use, you can just either clone or download this repository and use this as base for your TypeScript development. If you look here at the README, you see there are different build options. So if you start working on it and you see how to do this in the follow-up tutorials, once you want to build your code, there are different options. So here's the minified version, which you execute running this npm build command. And this one will create a minified version, which you can directly include in a homepage via the script tag. So this is something to publish and to use in the homepage. Then there's also down here this development version. This is similar to the minified version, just it's not minified and it also includes source maps. So this is when you want to develop and also debug the code, you would use this development version and you have nearly the same command as above, npm run build, but here with colon dev. Now, when you want to build a package, so something which you can reuse in other of your packages or even publish to npm, I have this run npm or npm run build colon npm script. What this will do, it will create a JS common library. So this is good if you want compatibility and it's good to share this. It will create a single file which contains all your exports as module exports and yeah, you could install it into one of your other packages which I'm gonna show you later. And finally the fourth version here it's npm run build npm minus es6. So this contrary to this JS common npm version will also build an npm package but it will use ES6 exports and the reason I provide this and the reason why you might want to use it is this will enable tree shaking in webpack and yes yeah, since tree shaking is an important topic to make your packages smaller I gonna show you now what exactly it is what it does and yeah also the differences you can expect so what you see here are two dummy projects based on the boilerplate. So all the files you see here on the left and on the right come with the boilerplate. Just this index.ts file will be empty. I've already filled this. So here on the right side you see I've a little library which has a sum function, a subtract, multiply and a divide function and all are exported as named exports. What I also did down here, and this is something you have to do when you first check out the boilerplate, there's this project info JS. You provide a minified library name. You could give this a name two and the library would be called two. And this is when you do a minified build. This will become the name of the library if you import such a library into a HTML page using the script tag. 
can access it then via this minified library name. Yeah, this is something you set up and also what you would set up, you go into the package JSON and here change the name, give some description, set the version, all that stuff here, your author's name, this is not provided. And then the first thing you would run an npmi to install all those dependencies which come with this boilerplate, which is what I've already done, but you have to do this once you check out the boilerplate. But let's get back to this example where I want to show you what tree shaking is, how it works and how it can be helpful. So as you can see here we have four methods which we export. And then here on the left side this is the project which I just called one. It imports from this here. So if we look at the package JSON you see I have a file dependency. This is also something you can do if you have multiple repositories checked out. You can create such interdependencies with file. And I later also show you, you can directly create dependencies. So install npm packages from some Git repository. But here for this demo setup, I just have a relative dependency. And then I use it like any other npm package. And here I just import one function, one method and that's the sum method. I don't use subtract, multiply or divide, just this one method. And then I create a sum and export it. Now let's imagine I want to build this as a minified version to be included on my homepage. So I run the script and now let's see what the result of that build will be. So up here in the disk you see the treeshake one minjs. This is how I call this. And if we look at this, let's make it a little bigger. You see down here in this line, there's the sum, subtract, multiply, divide. And up here you also see the respective function definitions. So here the u function is the sum, the n function is the subtraction, then we have the multiplication and the division. So there's a lot of code here in this minified version, which we actually don't use anywhere in here. So it seems like Webpack was not able to figure out that we just need this one method from package number two. And this is where tree shaking can help us, which Webpack will do automatically if it's set up correctly. And with this boilerplate, it is set up correctly, but it can only do this for packages which use ES6 exports. For example, let's look at this index.js. So here within the lib folder, this is the generated npm package. And if you look at it, this package, it's this JS common package style, which doesn't use the normal exports, it uses common JS exports. And Webpack is not able to tree shake those. So what we're now gonna do, so let's just delete those two. And now we build npm run build npm minus ES6, so the ES6 version. Now let's look. This looks very simple. This is just ES6 JavaScript. The exports as you would expect them. Now, if we also update the version here in the package.json, so let's just set it to 104. And then here on the left side, I will just update the dependencies, npm, update. Now we can build the minified version again, npm, run, build. And if we now check out this minified program, you see instantly it's much smaller. It's nearly half the size. And up here in this line, you can already see that all those other functions, subtract, multiply, divide are gone. And just up here, you see this U, there's our sum function and it's already including the sum, which we call down here in the index. So Webpack was able to completely remove the dependencies which are not used here. It was much more efficient at minifying that code. So for, for this example, it's nearly half the size, I'd say. Yeah, and I also used this principle of tree shaking for my other lips here. For example, the gallery TS here, it depends on both the DOM tools and the lazy loader. And before I had tree shaking enabled, the resulting minified build here was 25% bigger than after I enabled tree shaking. And this can be quite relevant if you want to optimize your homepage so it loads very quickly. So making sure that the JavaScript code is minified properly, that tree shaking can be used by Webpack to remove all the code that's not even used in your gallery. 
Yeah, and in the follow-up tutorials, we'll also learn some other ways how you can further reduce the code size. And we're also gonna start with an actual project. So I already mentioned this, this Mebrite lazy loader, this lazy loading library. Let's have a look what it does. So on my homepage, I show a lot of images and those images are all lazily loaded. So whenever a user goes to this page, it first loads everything in the DOM and then starts loading the images. And if I scroll down, you will see here this space, there was a little delay for this image to load. So I have both lazy loading for images, which I have, for example, in this gallery, and then also kind of a scroll loader. So only if I scroll across the area where some content appears, will it be loaded. And this way, this homepage is very fast. So let's, for example, go to the tutorials where I use many iframes to include YouTube videos. So currently you see here, this video is loaded directly because it's visible. If I now scroll down, there are many more YouTube videos which are lazily loaded. And that's very important because they include a lot of JavaScript code. So those iframes, if you don't load them in a lazy fashion, this will be a huge impact on the speed of your homepage. And yeah, this is what we're gonna tackle here. So I'm gonna lead you through how I coded this lazy loader. We're gonna learn a lot about TypeScript, about why I prefer it over JavaScript and how it could also help you to write better code, more modular code. We learn about some design patterns and as I said, also some optimizations which you can do. But yeah, the first thing is this TypeScript boilerplate really gets you started and makes sure that whatever you do in TypeScript can later be transpiled into proper code, which you can either use publishing to NPM or directly embed in homepage. So yeah, stay tuned for that. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and also subscribe for the follow-up videos.